Hey, it's Joe from the Auditor, and this is part three of Hellbent and Maestria talking through objects. It looks like we're getting back into classes here at the beginning of this, at least, and I uh, hope you're enjoying this. Um, I think it's objects and classes are very powerful. It's great to know, so I hope you like it. Please like the video, too. That'd be great. Thank you. Cheers. So where were you with that uh, object that you're doing the tracking? Tracking. Tracking the brains and... You know what? I'm going to have to mess with that later because it's not working as I had hoped it would. I don't know what or why it was doing what can it you, was doing. Can you discuss, like, talk over what you... Well, let me have a smoke first, but could you... Like, the theory, like, you don't have to actually go into the code. The theory about how it would work and how you would do it. But let me go for a quick smoke first. Okay. It puts... Brain, oh, because I changed it here. Didn't want that there. So when you run it, if I can, what the hell? Okay, well, I changed it to 300 for whatever reason. Okay, so there's the values. Now, every time I hit Alt, oh, it's going to put in a random okay. value in for the character's X position. Now, this is all I'm doing is I'm setting the character's X position. It comes in here, and it does its thing. It changes things out automatically. It's not like I've – then in here is where you would put your uh, your logic. And then your object is going to be brain. X and Y is going to be X. And then the colon equal is going to be the Y. So – Every no. time, so let's say let's say right now you have you have a a key that you're pressing to change the value. Can you make it do? Uh, what was that message there? Uh, that was just oh. See how I've got brain coming in. Brain X three hundred. Brain uh -huh. X three hundred. Then brain Y three hundred. So is that is that my character interacting with that or no? Okay. All it is is basically. You've got logic that changes the character's X and Y position. Mm -hmm. And you've got logic that changes the brain's X and Y position. Yes. Well, now, okay, when, so, so right now you have, a, you have one hotkey that changes the character's X location, right? Right. Can you do use that same key to randomly change the brain's position as well? well sure. Right? And then <clears throat> now how would, you, how would they detect if they touch? Yeah, see, you still have to build logic in it. Oh, not... okay, okay, okay. Is there, is there a way that you would think about, like, how would you think about writing that logic for it? Like, is there a simpler way that, like, you saw how I did it. I just ch checked the position X. If, if, if my X is the same as his X. Something just made a weird noise. So, yeah, I mean, what? You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I can see I can see one definite thing that you're. it's going to be too difficult for you to do right now, but you don't have a width and a – well, I guess, yeah, you, you would have to add in a width and a height. Right, yeah. You said those were constants, though, right? Yes, they are constant. Okay, so I can just build the constant into the library then. What is the width and height of the brain? Let's say it's 50, let's say it's uh, uh, 50 by 100 for the character and 25 by 25 for the brain. And you said, what was it? Uh... Uh, 50 wide, 50 wide, 100 high. Uh, yeah. 50. Okay. I mean, it's... okay. Now let's let's say I did have to write all that logic in there, though. Um, would this be? Does this keep track of all of the objects? Like, because yeah. as it is, I have to write. I have to rewrite the logic. For the so does is the player? Is the player interacting with brain one? Is the player interacting with brain two? Is it, and I have to write the logic for each of them. 
Whereas this, with the object, I might be able to just be able to do it once. Uh, it should be. Uh, let's go ahead and... Ooh, yeah, I got to... I'm going to have to do some incrementation here. Uh, hold on a second. So, uh, is this even going to... So let's tool tip uh, uh, stuff brain x. So that should, yeah, it's okay. So the x is moving every time I hit it, which is great. So stuff brain x is less than stuff character x and stuff brain dot oh crap I gotta do x plus with uh, this width is greater than stuff dot character dot x so that should zero, 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 zero. Oh, hey, I had it. There we go. Every once in a while. Okay, we got a hit there. So, so what's that number? Is that is what's the number you have going? Zero and one. Zero means that there's no interaction. One means that there is interaction. I don't have okay. that. Okay. Are you able to can you print can you also add to the tooltip what the actual X and Y of the character and the brain are at that point? So that's okay, so let's see. Oop, brain you know what? This has to be there. There we go. There we go, that makes more sense. There we go. Okay, so we have a collision. 307, 314, that's within bounds on the XX, or the... Uh, hold on a second. Why am I... Oh, I'm an idiot. I am an absolute idiot. Okay, so this needs to be this. And this needs to be that. Uh, oh, crap. Oh, yeah, that's no, that's with in fact brain character. There's the characters with in height not there. Stuff to, oh, because I called it the same damn thing. <sighs> <laughs> Some days. All right, now. And why am I getting... Oh, because I've got a layer slide there. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Brain X 239, Character X... 240. So they are within one, which would be. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. How how much are they? How much are they? Oh, it's random number. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's just going to be random. <laughs> yeah. So. That there would be. So all I would have to do now is add in more characters, and more brains, which yeah, years have been done. <laughs> So, brain so how many okay, how many brains do you have right now? One? Just one. Okay. And if you want to add another brain. Yeah, I gotta do some extra logic in here. So static count equals I'll just go one. Okay. So if not is object oh but there's never gonna be. So that's kind of pointless. So Stuff count plus plus dot brain. Okay. 
So let's just have a look at BJ Cody Cross. And that negates all of this bullshit. So stuff brain. Da, da, da. Okay, so this will never happen. Or it'll always happen actually. So BJ call equals static count call equals one stuff dot uh, count plus plus. Oh, I am not capitalizing that. Chad, would you mind zooming in one level? Thank you. Oh man. Yeah, much better. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it, but I was struggling to read it. Yeah, yeah. Stuff that character. This will all be J. Okay. So, all right. So we've got. All right. We'll just loop this twice. Because we're going to have two different characters. A index. Uh, character then we two so, okay, index. okay okay so, so that that part there that would be my move routines yeah basically okay 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 so we're gonna have to put two of these and Loop two of these. I'll get rid of those because it's kind of pointless. And that's creating the the brain and the character objects. Hopefully, okay. if I've done this right. Uh, let's see. M O B J dot count. Oh no, that's got to be plus plus there. Yeah. With. Okay. Oh, no. BJ. Oh, dot brain dummy. That's interesting. OBJ stuff is to, to count. Dot brain. Oh, I haven't constructed. Oh, okay. I'll just do this then. Do, 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 do. Put it on. And that. And then. Mm -hmm. Character. Come. Okay. Okay. Okay, so stuff count brain object and BJ. Oops. Yeah, I know. Okay, it is an object. Stuff count brain X. Y with Oh, you son of a bitch. There we go. Okay. So those are being put in to the object. And the object is stuff. Da, 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 da. Okay. So Oh, and that. And here. oh, shit, 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 shit. Adding complexity makes it, uh, complex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what are you doing there? That on line 29, this dot object equals object. Um, Trying to. Oh, this sucks. This really sucks. It's the way I had it before. 
this was actually OBJ A index character. Okay, M A index. This is box. No. The hell is I getting message boxes? Oh, double message box. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Okay. And I wanted this to be is that object. This is not an object. But that is an object. Because I'm a goddamn moron. Okay. It is an object. It is an object. Okay. So that's good. That character is an object. Is an object. That X is not an object. Is not an object. That's not good. So let's uh, no, let's go. <laughs> Stuff that on line thirty one, should that OBJ have uh, uh Well the object inherits everything from here. Uh Come on. I'm really sorry, my Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. If if hey, if this if this makes things more simple. Okay, let me ask you something. So let's say let's say that your your code end, ends up being pretty much exactly, right? It has more complexity. It, it's harder for me to type out. But what would the performance would there be a, a difference in the performance? Um I don't know, performance-wise, it'd probably be similar, if not the same. It's just, you know, you wouldn't have to be coding a whole bunch of crap each time in each instance or whatever. You right. can just... Because... You know, in another brain, right? It's see, because this is, this is how the brain works. The brain works that if it, if it collides with the, the border, it... Hold on a second. Yeah, I think you're gonna say it, it goes off in a different direction. Yeah, if it collides, it 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 creates a random Guys, number. I gotta speed. go for a minute. Talk amongst uh, yourselves. Okay, okay. So yeah, it creates a a random a a random um direction or something. Direction. Mm -hmm. Let me let me okay. Let me have a look at my screen. <clears throat> So if it collides, it creates a random, let me see. I have a lot of random numbers in here. So it creates a random X and Y value. Um, so this, the X and Y value is basically at speed, right? And it has a range of minus two to two. If brains in one, change its direction, give it a give it an X and a Y speed. X three, Y three, X three. Oh, okay. I see what I, I did there. I I I actually I had some bad logic here, like. I, I didn't want I didn't want zero to be an option within the uh, random numbers. Yeah. But I didn't want I didn't want it to be super. I didn't want it to actually be impossible. So what I did is I ran through four times. If after four times the value would be zero, it could have zero. Hmm. You, I, I I'm wondering because I don't know if I mentioned my background's in statistics, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, there's probably, like, you could get a normal distribution instead of a random distribution, right? And then you could set the zero to be on that outer, you know, two and a half times the normal distribution. So it's, anyway, it's just something to consider next time. Okay, let me see. 
So <clears throat> it creates, I'm trying to find where it crashes into the border. Okay, so now I see. So if the third brain, so I have, a, I guess I'm using, do I do each one like that? Yeah, I do. I wrote, oh my God, there's so much logic for this. Uh, if the third brain, if its X value is less or equal than 50, it'll change its X value to in a positive. So it'll keep it'll keep the same Y speed, but mm -hmm. it'll change. It'll give it a new random X speed if it collides with the left side of the screen. Mm -hmm. And then if it does the other side, it gives it a minus number, which would move to the to the left. And it does the same with that. Let me see. Brain add X three control move. So yeah, so the brains they have to they collide if they collide with the border, they pick a new path and move off. New path, new speed. If they hit a laser, they respawn and no score changes. If they hit another brain, they respawn, no score changes. And if they hit the player, they get eat, they get respawned, and the player gets a point. So it has to, the logic has to check if it collides with any wall, if it collides with any of the two other brains. If it collides with any of the four lasers, or if it collides with the player, and depending on what it does, it does a different action. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't I haven't looked at this in months, and I gotta say, I did a like I can't believe how much. I put into this and this was the easier one yeah that other one with the missiles was I found that way more taxing mm. yeah that's I, I've never tried to do anything like any of that stuff um, but it, I mean a lot of it is it's logic and math right of and then as Chad's saying is storing the values and then just calculating what's going on and using some logic to decide what happens <clears throat> I think I think one of the things is is that probably with other platforms and other languages they'll have perhaps engines that can track this stuff on for you so you don't actually have to type in the logic so you just create a, a perhaps an object and then yep. put it into the engine and it knows what to do with it yeah it, I mean basically people have written out functions right and then it, it, you pass it the right parameters it's just finding one that does what you want right and it could be as complex as I'll get out. And the fact that it's in a function that you don't even look at, it's awesome. Yeah. So what kind of, what kind of projects are you working on right now? Um, I'm helping some people automate some stuff on LinkedIn. And, um, and then, like that one I was showing you with adding calendar events to Outlook, and um, what was the other big? One? I've been trying to learn more about HTML and JavaScript and triggering events on web pages because it's sometimes I'll run into a snag where I'm trying to you know click something or submit something and it doesn't it doesn't trigger it. Huh. So I'm trying to learn more on that. <clears throat> I'm actually so I I quit my job in January. Um, and I'm just kind of right now doing side projects here and there, but I'm not looking for work. I'm trying to learn programming. Mm. Right. And so that's why, like, even like this, that's why I also talk in with you in general, but have you, um, have you heard about like, uh, programming boot camps? No, they have, I, I seen one a, a, about a month ago or so I, I gave it a try a little bit and what it is, is it's like a course. Mm -hmm. Now this one is free, but some of them they can cost like twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, right. And it's like you go through these certifications where you have to spend like 
you know, 800 hours doing this kind of coding and that. And at the end of it, you can use that to actually say, you know, I'm certified as a, yeah. in program. Well, here's the irony, right? I don't want to be a programmer, right? The thought of just sitting here writing code all day does not interest me. What I like doing is solving problems, um, and, and I like to use programming to do that, but it's it's – I don't want to be a hard, I just want to know more about using objects and classes and, you know, doing things efficiently, but I, I don't necessarily want to get a job being a programmer. I will pay someone, right, to, mm -hmm. if I come up with some good ideas to do it. Yeah, I can hear you there. Like like I said, half the projects that I do, I get halfway through it, I learn what I want to know, and yeah. I don't need to put on the, the finishing touches. I, I already got it. <clears throat> And most of the pro especially lately, the projects have been stuff that I've never done before and dealing with things that I have never done before. Like that that last week or the week before, I did that that little GUI that uh, you could change the colors, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the things that I learned with that was using the string left and string right mm -hmm. to separate the values so that way I could actually display the hex code. Mm -hmm on those little three little uh, values and how to chain, convert it to hex, convert it back to decimal. Mm -hmm. um, recently, just uh, I hadn't, one of the first scripts I'd done when I first started was I, I figured I learned how to save to a file, but I, I had no use for it after that. So I've been getting more into saving to a file and uh, uh I'll tell you one just to keep in the back of your mind is um, if you end up frequently writing to a file, you can access a file object instead of doing like file append. Mm -hmm. It is lightning fast. I mean, it's so much faster, but it's, it's only when you're writing a lot of crap, you know, writing hundreds or thousands of times, um, is it really help? But if you're doing it in bulk, it, it really makes a huge difference. You, you mean, am I, am I writing lots of files or writing lots of stuff to a file? Writing lots of stuff to a file. Okay, I actually did a project just, uh, um, like I said, uh, last week I started learning uh, GDI+. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I liked about it was that I could actually use that to generate images mm -hmm. as text. Right? So I could actually share a, a game. I could share a game without having any assets go. Like I, there would be nothing to download it. You could just copy the text, run the script, and it would generate the PNGs mm -hmm. on your end. No, you'd need no internet connection or anything, mm -hmm. right? And you wouldn't have to download. So I had this. I came up with this script where it would. I made a GUI the same size as a control that I wanted to make. So let's say if I want to make a custom button, I could make it a lot easier in let's say Paint Shop. Or some, I mean, Photoshop or something like that. I don't have Photoshop. I have a uh, Paint.net, but mm -hmm. I can make a, a better image than I could if I was just using GDI Plus. So I could create a a button or a control, a custom control, and then I could run a script that would do a a grid and grab every single pixel. Mm -hmm. So so it would do. Let's say if the button was. Uh, 100 pixels wide by 50 pixels high, I could just set it to grab all those pixels mm -hmm. and save it to a file. One of the last ones that I, I was working on before I said, you know what, I'm done with that, was it was a, uh, it was the border for a GUI and it was something like 500 pixels wide yeah. by 700 pixels tall. And it would have taken it, it was probably be about, I think it was like 330 some odd thousand pixels that uh -huh. I had to grab, right? And I think it was, it could go through a thousand every 10 seconds. Yeah. Right? And that's just to grab the pixel. That's not even to draw it and write it to file. Yeah. So, so the benefit of a file object is when you use a file append, Every time you call that file append, it opens the file, writes to it, and then closes it, mm -hmm. right? So every time, if you find yourself using file append over and over and over, every time it's very taxing on your hard drive too, right? But it's it slows it down. The, the, the file object 
will open the file and leaves it open. And then you can write to it so fast, it's incredible. And then you could just close it at the end, right? So if, if you're writing, a, you know, if you're doing stuff where you are frequently writing to the same file, that's where this is definitely worth looking at. Okay, okay. So so for my example, it probably wouldn't really do anything because it's all, it's adding to it in one shot. You, you're right. I think you'd be, it wouldn't help you, yes. It, it I, For my test, when it was working with bigger files and it was doing once, that didn't really matter. It was the open and closing of files, mm -hmm. which sometimes, you know, you're working things and that's what you do, and, and it, it really made a huge difference. But, yeah, I don't think this would help you in that case. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I passed up on that because actually shortly after that, I figured I learned how to – that I could actually just um, – Draw it yourself. Well, I did yeah. that for I did that for a while, and the controls are okay, you know, whatever. I'm not really happy with them. I can do a lot better if I actually draw them. But what I did find was that I can download the URL. Oh, sure, yeah. Right, which I didn't uh, know before. So I yeah. still have to. They, the person would still have to download it. Sure, but it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot uh, oh, yeah. different than just downloading the file off of, let's say, Mega Video or, or sure. Mega Downloads or whatever. Yeah, chat actually has a, a function which is pretty well used, I think, on a, on the forum for um, the downloading. There, or maybe he wrote the one that's the download the variable instead of downloading it to a file. I have, we'll have to ask him. I remember I was like, oh, he, he's like, yeah, I love this one I wrote. And I'm like, I didn't even realize. You want to hear another file? Have you seen my screen clipping tool? I, I seen the video for it, but I yep. don't I don't know what that does. So it's like like I, I look at it and you have your tool, but I, it's something that I don't use. Like it would be it's it's it crosses that threshold for now. For you now, know what? I'll, given that you have one screen, right? At least right now you have one screen. I yeah. would say you really should be using it. Is my my guess, right? My statement. Let me um. Let me share my screen and just demonstrate how I would use it, especially because when I'm on a laptop, right, it's it's just night and day. So do can you see this screen? Yes, I can. So oh, I see I see yes, yes. Yeah, I the site. Well. Yeah. So let's say in here too, right? I would just be like, Oh, you know what, I'm trying to work on this in this and like you mentioned earlier, you wanted to fold stuff but you couldn't. Hey, you know what? I'm just gonna grab this. Let me hold on a second. It's acting. whoa, whoa. Something oh. Wow. My um just a second. You know, if you're if you're doing what I think you're doing, yeah, I definitely want that. Yeah, it's uh it's insanely helpful. Um what oh my oh my main script at line seven eleven seven uh, so I added something into here. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So, so I can just go like this, and I can scroll down, right, and still see it. I can move I can't it. See your, I can't see your screen. You can't okay, see my yeah, screen. Okay. Now I see the. I see. Oops. <laughs> I'll do it again. So, you can see the site. Yes, yes, I can see the site. So I, I can just grab whatever I want, right, and then scroll, and it just stays visible. Now, what about if I want to do, like, I want something like that that can grab a, let's say, a, a video. Actually, so um, there's two tools. One, Chad introduced me to, it's called LiceCap, and it does animated GIFs. And so it's, it doesn't capture your audio, right? But it's super easy to use, and you basically draw a rectangle, and it will it will record your you know your mouse movements and what you're doing, and it and it makes small files. And so I'd recommend that. Mm -hmm. the The other one he actually introduced me to also, I think it's called OSR, or it's three letters, um, and it's a free. Well, but you make video. What do you use for recording your videos, your webinars? O OBS. Oh, that that must be it. So yeah, so that's the other one. Yeah, but this is just you know when you're when you're trying to do something and your the screen is too long or it's on a different tab, right? I, it just stays on top or a different. I can definitely I can definitely see the use in that. 
Yeah. Um, what would what I would really love, like I, I heard you could do it a while ago, is let's say if I want to, if I'm programming or whatever, and I only have one screen now, so I usually had I used to have where I could have a movie playing on the other screen or mm-hmm. something playing on the other screen. If I could make something that plays a video on the screen and always on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what you could do is you could um. You could either do it with VLC or with Windows Media Player, and I think Chad has a class he wrote for working with the Windows Media Player, and that would allow you to force it to stay on top. Yeah, but that's still that's still only a limited range of things that. Well, I guess I could download videos off of YouTube. Well, what? Well, uh, okay. So let's say let's say if I'm if I'm if I want to let's say if I'm not me and I want to watch my video my tutorial right. Right. I want to have like a little screen, like take take the, how your face is up on the screen right now, and paste that right here on my uh, on my script editor, so I can follow the video while I'm actually typing away, right? Of a live video feed. Of a live video feed. Yeah, I don't. I I don't. We, let's ask Chad if he knows anything. I I don't know if even you know what even if even if it's not because. I know most people you can download the video off of YouTube. Sure. Right? So worst case scenario, you just put it through Media Player. As long as I can resize, like you can right. resize. Sure. And it would do the the ratio as well. It right. Wouldn't, like I wouldn't just be uh, Yeah. only zooming in on the face or right. whatever. Right, right. No, you can tell it how much of the screen to take up and do you want to scale it or, you know, zoom in or not, I think. I don't use Windows Media Player a lot. Um, I use VLC, um, but I and I know VLC um, is not com based, which is how I would have written. That's why Windows Media Player is, which opens up the door to being you can really you know do exactly what you want. Yeah. Um, but let's ask him if he has something he does that with because. I do think as long as it's not live where you're trying to stream something that's a live video that you're looking at, um, you should be able to grab whatever media, leave it on top, resize it to whatever you want, right? That's mm. that's not hard. Like I remember uh, back in 2007-ish, I used to play a lot of online poker, but I have no patience for it, right? So I'd have like 50 little screens going with 50 little tables and I'd play 50 hands, you know, I'd lose a lot. I'd lose a lot. But, <laughs> you know, I'd have 50 of them. If I could have a way of just putting those those little windows, cutting the piece off the window, sticking it on a GUI, and have them there like that, that would be. Yeah. So you can't interact with the thing that you put up there, though, right? It's just like a, a screenshot kind of? Right, right. Yeah, once it's done, it's done. You can create multiple, which is nice, right? Um, and and I have it also, if I hit a different hotkey, actually, if I do this one, I think it's this one, it'll pop open here in a second. Although, I don't know, maybe that one, let me see if I paste, no? Um That's weird. I thought that was the right hotkey. So this is co- that's copying all the pixels, right? So if I put a, a picture there, it'll copy the picture. It'll grab whatever is on there. Huh. It's acting weird. I'm going to go for a quick smoke. Okay. <clears throat> 